Joining us now um, to uh, end up our commentary is uh, the person we brought on to start our commentary, Mike Moses, the Space Shuttle Program Launch Integration Manager. Um, we've been hearing about it this morning, Mike, but uh, so far so good in the test uh, so, you know, results so far. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, the GUP didn't leak, which was uh, a good milestone. We've talked to the teams recording the data. Um, the temperature data looks like what they were expecting it to look like. Um, they're, uh, they couldn't even wait for the computers to do the processing. They're down by hand, typing things into Excel spreadsheets to try to look at temperature data and strain data, and that's all looking in family too. So they're they're pretty excited with all that. So yeah, it looks like we're getting good data. Like like anything with the hazardous operation, it's it's nice and boring today, which is a good thing. So everything's looking just the way it's supposed to. You engineers love data. Well, speaking of which, you're going to continue to gather data for the next uh, day until the tank warms up to a uh, ambient you know air temperature yeah one of the one of the things they are going to do is let this run through all the way through drain and and uh, recovery which is uh data we don't have so that'd be good to see too so so this will put us um at that point what uh, how long do you expect the analysis to take basically a rough time frame um well it's gonna it's gonna stretch over a couple of weeks uh in the short term um we're gonna kind of look for correlation to the model predictions to make sure everything looked linear with what the models were predicting we kind of expect that uh, story to come in on sunday um, and then uh, that would tell the team that from a configuration standpoint, we, we captured what we were looking for, and they can go ahead and deconfigure out at the launch pad and be ready for rollback. Um, but then the detailed analysis is going to take a couple of weeks as it feeds into all the rest of the testing. In fact, some of the data might not be analyzed for months uh, as it goes and, and looks at the long-term model effects. But in terms of flight rationale data, uh, we're going to get to that right away, and we should start, start looking at that as early as this weekend. And then the plan is, um, if everything goes well, is uh, no earlier than, I guess, Tuesday morning, early morning Tuesday, we would be uh, taking Discovery off the launch pad and back to the vehicle assembly building. Yeah, the schedule's changing constantly because uh, <laughs> there's a bunch of work that has to be done, and, the, and then the work we do in the VB is moving around a little bit, so the, the ground processing teams are doing their usual amazing job. But, uh, yeah, basically the rough plan is to deconfigure, break all the connections out of the pad, uh, roll back into the VAB, establish all the platforms and access in there, and then we have to build up some scaffolding. The uh, you know the, the main reason to go back is to get the X-rays on the back side of the tank, and and there is a platform that goes there, but it's about uh, oh maybe two feet wide and and uh, a very long drop all the way down to the deck of the MLP, and so we got to build some scaffolding and some uh, some personnel fall protection uh, in for that to get the teams up there to do the X-rays. It goes up about probably 25 feet off the, off the deck of that platform they'll be they'll be getting access so over the christmas time between christmas and new year's our uh, our nde our non-destructive evaluation team will be busy shooting x-rays and then uh and then we'll move into january time frame to look at what we need to do uh any future work on the tank and that means potential modifications or anything else you might do in, in addition to obviously getting it ready to get back into a flight posture and then yeah correct uh you know we got to take the instrumentation off shoot the x-rays and then if we're going to do a mod that's when we do it uh and then respray the foam and close out the areas from where we had the instrumentation and then get back out to the launch pad uh, not to put you on the spot and obviously the data is not even in even though people are looking at it in the basements right now um how confident are you that uh, is the shuttle program confident that, that this data and all the data you're doing and the, the modifications if you have to make any all that will be pulled together the uh the, the, the work being done at Michoud to mock up uh, all that pulled together will get you to uh, back to a launch posture by you know February. Well, let's definitely get us back to a launch posture. All that's been coming along. It's just the timing of it, and and are we at a point where we're comfortable and we've had enough independent checks to make sure that we're we're not missing anything. So I really think we're going to get there. Um, February third's a, a challenge, but we'll we'll stay on it. It's a it's a target for the milestones right now, and we're not going to pick an official launch date until we have a much better. A much better look at what the data is really telling us. So. All right. Now we'll see that in the next few weeks, I guess, then. All right, yep. Mike Moses, thank Thanks. you for taking the time. to. And good luck with the rest of the uh, data gathering. No problem, Mark.